So Yu, uh, as chief strategy officer with uh, Yingli, you are probably quite pleased with the latest financial results because it shows the strength of the company and how you are growing an important player in the solar industry. Now, looking forward, you seem to be still taking a very aggressive path. What are some of the strategies that you see being implemented in the next few years? Uh, I think that the key strategy we are going to implement for the next few years will be including the following. The first is the ramping up of the facility gradually to meet the growing market demand. The second is the enhance the technical competitiveness by gradually increase our sales efficiency um, to follow our technical roadmap. The third thing is to, to establish a global sales network and a sales after sales network to provide a high quality sales to our customer. Internally, the most important thing is we will still enhance our quality control processes and also to further um, finding those areas which we can uh, uh, control or lower our costs on a long-term basis. Now, within you, you're a very vertically integrated company. Now, within the vertical integration, are there any specific parts of the company where you're, for instance, putting more of a focus on quality control than others? Uh, I think, uh, um, actually, both this kind of business model has its advantage and disadvantage. To be honest, I think uh, as, a, as a fully vertical, um, you don't have to buy anything from any third party, which definitely your cost should be competitive. But on the other side, on the other hand, you have a kind of high capex demand compared to a same output volume per water basis. So I think uh, um, you have to balance like uh, um, your your uh, say strategy based on a kind of long term basis. Uh, what do you want? You want to be here only for two years. You want to get investment back, or you want to be a long-term player? But definitely, I think uh, fully vertical has much advantage than disadvantage, especially from the cost control and the technical improvements. Now, with the um, the capacity growth, obviously you're, you you have your ingots and wafering side, you have your cell making, and you have your modeling. Can you talk a little bit about the plans the company has to expand that capacity over the next few years? Uh, we actually has a kind of five years uh, uh, plan to grow in our capacity. Uh, at the first stage, uh, we will grow roughly 600 megawatts to be completed by the end of, uh, end of this year. Now we are in the process to getting approval for our board uh, for the uh, next few stages. Now, although you are vertically integrated, how much from the uh, upstream material suppliers, you still have relationships with people in polysilicon and in wafering and things like that. How, are, how is that developing? Uh, I think now the, the PV materials has become another very um, important business because um, the technical improvement and the cost of roadmap will be significantly influence the, the panel cost. Actually, in this area, I see more and more new people coming, existing players, keeping ramping up their facility, and also um, the materials has been become more and more, say, quality reliable, and also they are developing more and more products. So I think everybody has a kind of overall same target, which is uh, how to work together to achieve the great parity. Now, there has been some comment in the industry that the price reduction has not been as rapid in the ingot and wafer side as it's been in the cell and module side, creating a bit of imbalance. But you guys are vertically integrated. Of course, you still need some of those, mater some of those materials from uh, uh, outside suppliers. But um, how do you plan to address uh, ways of eating that out so you can deliver the lowest installed cost? Uh, I think uh, from our side now, we fully vertical from Ingold to Wafer. We buy poly and other materials like EVA back sheet. Um, I think uh, for me, I don't have a plan to say uh, produce everything by myself, even in poly, okay? We have our own poly plant, but uh, we will only uh, use them to supply roughly 25 to 30 percent of total what we need. It's a kind of uh, diversification of uh, uh, of the of the supply resources, so I think uh, 
the, the, the room that we can further um, did low our cost is from, of course, part of them is from the contribution from my supplies. But the majority should be from your technical stress. Because the, even you can averagely increase your sale efficiency by 0.1%, the, the cost saving per water basis is significant. I want to talk a little bit about uh, one of your technology points, and that is your Panda uh, technology for cells. And you recently announced that you have uh, reached 19.89%, uh, very close to 20% for a high efficiency cell. What, um, what are some of the recent developments in Panda, and how much is the Panda technology being, uh, how much percentage of your production is the Panda technology account for? I think uh, the, the reason to develop the, the, the Panda cell or Panda technology is uh, is uh, from two perspectives. First is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the high efficiency cell can help us to lower those fixed costs to produce the same volume of panel. Uh, panel. But on the other side, uh, a high efficiency panel can significantly lower the fixed uh, balance of system cost while our customers to install those panels, which uh, do a lot of contribution to the to the um, to the. Um, and, uh, and the users that uh, can be more close to a comparity. On the other side, the uh, monocrystalline pan panel should be performed much reliable compared to multi through the next, through the use of life. So currently we have roughly 30%. It will be increased gradually, but uh, maybe finally we will reach like uh, 60, 40, 60, more than 40 multi. We will still have a multi because we still have a another tech technical roadmap to enhance our multi-technology. What is the thought on how high Panda can get? What do you think the top limit is? I think uh, Panda is the, is the we call it the N-type cell. Actually, it's just kind of uh, one of the, the technologies that you can increase your cell efficiency. Actually, there's uh, additional technology like a back contact, even HIT. So, um, for this intact, I think if we don't significantly change or the structure of doing the R&D, the room is not very, um, is not too much. But uh, actually, we are also looking for other technology. Maybe if we can, uh, say, um, um, con um, combine back contact with NTAP together, or even if we find the HIT is ready for large scale at a reasonable cost. So this is our technology roadmap. We're not only focused on one technology, sure. but a combination of different technology. This is just one stage in your technology yes. development. But in general, how how high do you think like you're you're going to be able to get monocrystalline if you have all these things going together? I can tell you first is in the laboratory, mono can even reach to 30%. So we are talking about large scale business. So I'm pretty confident in the next five years we can increase the model efficiency roughly by, or say, close to 1% every year. This is our technical target. And also, because you're vertically integrated, not only do you have the ability to work on higher efficiency cells, but to figure out ways to integrate them in the module so there's less of a gap between cell efficiency and module uh -huh. efficiency. So what are the, some of the things you're working on on the module side to try and narrow that gap and raise module efficiency? Yeah, I mean, of course, this is, uh, a very uh, good question. I mean, now what we are working with our uh, end users and also our material supply is to first to see how the materials that are using to assemble the panel can be upgraded to a level to, to minimize the, the loss through cell uh, assembly to module. On the other side, we work with the EPC to see how we can stand, standardize the module or optimize the module structure to develop a more um, easy way to install everything with a low cost. This is the two trends.